Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Simply New uh, webinar. And today we are very honored and blessed to have with us Dr. J. Lopez. Dr. J. Lopez is from the J. Lopez Medical Group. All right, and uh, Dr. J. Lopez is US trained in integrative medicine, uh, physician and certified nutrition specialist. So he focuses on preventive medicine, uh, age management. So you can, when you see him, he looks nothing like age, he looks very young. <laughs> um, and holistic treatment for chronic degenerative diseases and age-related disorders. And Dr. Joel is also quite an expert on uh, the immune system and that's why we invited him this morning to have this webinar where he's going to share with us on the immune system. And, how, uh, and I think that's a topic that's very interesting uh, during this COVID pandemic. So uh, let's put our hands together and welcome Dr. Joel. Hi, Doc. Hi, good morning. It's so good to see you. Uh, how are you doing? I'm good, hanging in there. Hanging <laughs> in there. <laughs> um, it's, it's been two months of lockdown already here in the Philippines. Um, uh, and I think everybody is getting very agitated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cabin no. fever. We call cabin it cabin fever. fever. Yeah. <laughs> no, we were, last week we had a uh, webinar and we were just talking about the nature of the COVID virus, right? That mm -hmm. is an RNA virus. And that also uh, other RNA viruses in the past, like SARS, HIV, MERS, We've not successfully had any vaccines for any of them, right, Doc? And no. then, and yeah, they've been trying since 2003 without any success. So, pro professionally, I, I know we are all hoping for a vaccine. What does this mean, Doc? Uh, for for a doctor like yourself, uh, what's your strategy for your patients? Because uh, should yeah. we just hope for a vaccine, or what do we do? Well, there are current treatments available. However, you don't hear much about it from the news. Uh, among the most popular ones would be the anti-malarial drug called hydroxychloroquine. Yeah. And if a person doesn't want to do any synthetic form of medication, they could actually use an alternative such as quercetin, which is a bioflavonoid. Uh, oh. What it does similar to hydroxychloroquine is that it helps uh, the zinc actually penetrate into the cell. And it's the zinc mineral that actually prevents viral replication as well as transcription of viral proteins. Oh, zinc! So zinc is an important component of, uh, of the immune system. Wow, that, that's yeah. really good. Okay, mm -hmm. Doc, this morning, uh, what we hope to achieve uh, for all our audience this morning is uh, two things. One, let's have an understanding of how the immune system works. And uh, I thought if you could elaborate, because I know you have a wonderful video for us on uh, how the immune system works, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I've seen the video. You're going to enjoy it. It's a short video, but it's, it's made in a way that's so easy to understand. Uh, so we're going to play that video soon. But after that, Doc, I hope that you can also explain to us uh, what's adaptive immune system and the innate immune system. And so that's the first thing that we want to do today, which is uh, ed learn about the immune system. Number two is, can you give us tips on how to prep the immune system? What's important uh, components of the immune system and how do we strengthen it? Yeah, sure. Uh, you, you mentioned it to me before, there's an innate immune system and an adaptive immune system. Can you share with us more about these two topics? Sure. Well, the immune system is our body's defense against toxins, tumors, as well as germs, including viruses, bacteria, fungus, and parasites. Mm -hmm. So it's divided into innate and adaptive immunity. Sure. In innate immunity is something that we're born with, while adaptive immunity is something that develops after we're born. Uh, so does this that everybody's innate immune ability is, is pretty much the same? Yeah, innate immunity is less specific than adaptive immunity. So it's mm -hmm. more generalized. And it's actually divided into a couple of components. So right. there's physical barriers. So this includes the skin and mucous membranes. 
as okay. well as chemical barriers. So these are like enzymes produced in tears, which is called lysozyme, as well as hydrochloric acid in the stomach. So these oh, are things okay. that could actually... Our tears are part of our immune system? Yeah, it has this enzyme that could actually kill off bacteria and other germs. And it's oh. called lysozyme. So it protects our eyes because our yeah. eyes are where germs can go in. Oh. Yes. Does this mean that does this mean that if you take a tear, it's actually antiviral? Uh, you could say that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. All right, so, uh, 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 la uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen out there, our tears are part of our immune system. Oh, so watching Korean drama and crying out <laughs> activating your immune system. <laughs> so my mom is very happy with this uh, new medical fact. She's going to watch mm -hmm. more Korean drama. <laughs> yes. <All right. laughs> then there are certain cells in the body called macrophages, neutrophils, okay. as well as monocytes. These are also part of our innate immune system. So I, I remember from the video that you showed us, the macrophage cells are the ones that goes out and eats, eats up the, the uh, foreign uh, uh, bacteria and viruses, right? Exactly. And the term is called autophagy. Okay. Yeah, so with adaptive immunity, that consists of cells such as the T and the B lymphocytes. So the T lymphocytes are more like for cell-mediated immunity, while B cells are for humoral immunity. That's the one that actually produces antibodies. When we take vaccines, what are we actually trying to create uh, or stimulate? Are we, uh, are we stimulating the adaptive innate? Uh, immunity or, or uh, the adaptive or the innate immunity? More on the adaptive immunity. Oh, so yeah, because what we're trying to do is stimulate the body to produce antibodies. Okay. However, if you have nutritional deficiencies, then your body is not able to uh, exert or produce enough antibodies. So, what? best to probably get a natural exposure. Because mm. when you get natural exposure from ex infections, then you'll be able to produce lifelong immunity. Whereas a uh, vaccine, sometimes you have to do it several times because you're not able to generate enough antibodies. That's why you're given boosters. Oh, okay. Doc, this is very interesting. You just mentioned that you could actually have lifelong immunity and, mm -hmm. uh, and vaccines normally don't produce lifelong immunity and then you need boosters. Can you elaborate a little bit more about that? How come vaccines don't give you the lifelong immunity? Uh, so, if the, so the best way to get lifelong immunity is it to actually get the disease itself or, or how? Yeah, exactly. Like for instance, if a person has chicken pox, hmm. then that confers lifelong immunity. However, if a person's immune system goes down, they could mm. develop um, something called varicella zoster, which is like a reinfection. So that only oh. happens when an immune system, a uh, person's immune system goes down. Wow. So I, I, I was told since young that if you get chicken pox, you only get it once, right? But actually, yeah, I usually first, just once. Yeah. Yeah, but actually, I have actually encountered people who got it like. Uh, one and a half times or two times. It's like as if like the second or first one was not full blown. So that happens because the immune system actually uh, got compromised, got uh, dropped. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So, but then doc, how come we get flu? We get a flu and we don't get a lifelong immunity to flu. We, we get flu yeah, again. Yeah, that's a good question, Cheyenne. Because yeah. actually the virus mutates quickly. So let's say you had a vaccine today. It would only protect you from the strains from a year ago. So it won't protect you from the mutated strains. So that's why you have to have the shot on a regular basis, like on a yearly basis, if you do the flu shots. Oh, wow. I, I recently saw a documentary, Doc, that it says that the pharmaceutical industry has teams, teams of very smart researchers, the virologists mm -hmm. who actually... Uh, go out and see what's the most likely strains that are coming up and they update the vaccines every year. Wow, so mm -hmm. that's exactly what you're sharing. Oh, so, so does this mean that 
Well, that means we, we get flu like, well, I, I get flu like once every five years, but because uh, mm. <laughs> I have a strong immune system. But uh, yeah. the people <laughs> they get flu uh, every year. So it really means that the flu that they got is every year the flu is different from the year before. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, I mean, in fact, um, in fact, a lot of like medical workers, like nurses or doctors who work in the hospitals, probably forty mm. percent of them don't get the flu shots because, because sometimes they, it could actually trigger the flu. They they get yeah, they exposed to the the <laughs> the freshest, the freshest, uh, strain of flu every time they go into the hospital. Uh, yeah. Wow, that's that's doc. I mean. As we talk about this, it really seems like even if the vaccine comes, um, mm. we we will COVID will still be around because the COVID virus mutates very quickly, right? I, I mean, uh, from Wuhan to today, it's only been about six months, but there are already six six different strains of uh, COVID nineteen viruses. So yeah, and I actually read recently that there's about thirty strains now. Thirty strains now. 30, yeah. Oh, how, how so the, have, that's why the presentation in every country is like different. Oh my God, then how are we going to ever develop a vaccine? It's very likely that it's going to be like SARS. Or... Yeah, by the time they develop one, then the original strain is gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, so, so what is the strategy going forward? I mean, what can we do? Yeah, the best thing is to still optimize our immune system health by making sure that our nutritional status is optimal or perfect. Uh, we can't reach that um, because again, our food is not as um, mineral dense. So we're not getting enough nutrients from our food. So at this point in time, everybody needs to take some food supplements. We can't rely on just our food alone. That's what I mean. Wow. Uh, doc for all the listeners out there, I think this is a very pertinent information from Dr. Joel. Um, Dr. Joel just highlighted that our immune system needs uh, nutrients to fuel it. Uh, and, if, and we can't get these nutrients from our daily food. Uh, really difficult. I mean, m most, many people are living off canned food. I, I, just, yeah. got, uh, <laughs> I just got wonderful uh, free tuna and sardines from mm. my barang. Uh, I mm. don't know when your barangay is giving you yes. some sleep. <laughs> okay, but they gave us some sleep. And I've ate, eaten a lot of canned sardines. I doubt that they will help my immune system. Uh, mm -hmm. but, so, uh, it's a good source of vitamin D though. It's a good source of vitamin D. <laughs> so, uh, it helps. Um, doc, I have a question about the adaptive immune system. Um, uh, that is something that we develop over as, as we as we go through life, right? So mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of parents out, out, out there. Uh, is it good for children to live in a very sterile and clean environment? Or do we need to like sort of allow them to be exposed to, to viruses? You know, because right now, uh, mm -hmm. I know I have niece and nephew, right? So my, my sister wants to keep them like in a bubble. But uh, mm -hmm. I remember I was young, we were, play we were playing in the rain. In, in the, the dirty canals uh, and we didn't get sick <laughs> uh, yeah so same thing here actually <laughs> actually <laughs> oh, we need to be exposed the mud. you look so neat <laughs> 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 actually we need to be exposed to germs to be able to train our immune system if we all live in a plastic bubble and there's no exposure to germs then our immune system won't be trained quote unquote so is, is it good is it good for like uh, parents to always sanitize the house. You know, I, I know some OCD moms out there, mm -hmm. my sister, one of them, they literally, the house is sanitized all, all the time. You know, if the kids uh, drop their toy on the floor straight away, you mm -hmm. sanitize the toy. I mean, it is, are those actually good practices or is that something that we need to modulate a little? Mm -hmm. There has to be a balance between uh, too much uh, disinfection as well as um, getting dirt from our environment. <laughs> yeah, because some people use like harmful disinfectants and those could actually could cause more problems long term. 
like uh, something as simple as alcohol, if you just keep on applying alcohol, besides drying your skin, it would actually kill the microbiome on your skin. So we also have good bacteria on our skin. But if you wow. keep on using alcohol, that'll sterilize your skin. And actually, you'll get more prone to developing uh, infections, skin infections, if you keep on doing that. Oh, so the, the habit of all the ladies, I know ladies, they, they, it was such a trend to carry a little, like a, they, they, they hook it onto their handbag and it's a hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. oh, I see people mm -hmm. using sanitizers all the time. My wife gets upset with me. Did you wash your hands, you know, before you eat? And, you know, being a guy, you know, yeah, 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 I did, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, so what you're saying is that, I mean, if, if you use hand sanitizers like five, six times a day, you actually uh, do the reverse. You open yourself to infection. Yeah, because you're, we have our body's defense system and that includes our skin. And mm. our skin actually has uh, good bacteria in it as well. Oh, so if that's... you kill the good bacteria on your skin, then you get more prone to uh, infection by the harmful bacteria. So it's part of our immune system as well. Wow. So so what is the um, what is the good gauge? How often should you use a uh, hand sanitizer? Um, good question. <laughs> I can <laughs> tell you that. <laughs> but as long as you use the natural hand sanitizers, it should be okay. Okay. I mean, I mean Doc, uh, to, to our listeners out there, this is something very real. Uh, I think all the guys are whooping, woo, 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 and all the, all the moms are going, oh, all right? Because the dads always say, ah, let's not, let's, don't want to shower the kids. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I just wanted to share everybody, it's the same when you have diarrhea, right, Doc? When we have diarrhea and we, we poo-poo so much, all the good bacteria in our stomach actually um, comes out too. And then when we take antibiotics as well, it destroys the good bacteria in our stomach and uh, intestines. And after that, we keep having upset uh, GI problems until we take probiotics to replace mm -hmm. the, 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 the natural biome. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. yeah, yeah, it's so good what you shared about the skin. I only found out that the skin actually has uh, its natural biome and it's like it has good bacteria that prevents infection. So, yeah. uh, and actually, there is a product, I believe it's from Korea. It has a, it's a lotion that uh, you apply to your skin, but it also has a probiotic in it. So, ah. it'll help protect your body, actually. Well, thank you for saying that, Doc. Here's the good news it's actually a secret, but you, you brought it up. So, uh, in the nature, we, have, we are actually sharing our FDA. Uh, we have a therapeutic level of uh, probiotic. This, this, is not a, this is not a cosmetic product, so it's, it's really for treatment. So, these are probiotics that really will uh, strengthen your biome very, very strongly. So, we're going to launch that uh, hopefully by this year, if the COVID okay. doesn't be possible. Thank, thank you for that. All right, thank you, Doc, for ex giving us a good overview of the immune system. So everyone, uh, now we know uh, the, the macrophages, uh, T cells, NK cells, where you saw from the video that Doc Joel shared with us, and he talked about our, the, our innate immune system, which is the skin, our tear ducts, all that, and our adaptive immune system, which is uh, also highlighted in the video. So uh, we'll move on to part two, of our webinar today, which is how do we maintain our immune system? Uh, what does our immune system need? And uh, perhaps, uh, Dr. Joel, if you could recommend like uh, the top three things that we need to make sure that we have in order for us to have a basic, strong, innate and adaptive immune system. All right, so uh, let's, let's jump straight into it, Doc. How mm. what makes our immune system work? Is that, are there things that we need daily to allow our immune system to maintain itself to run? Yeah, well, we got to start with the basics, which is our diet. So mm -hmm. ideally, an anti-inflammatory diet consisting more of like plant-based food. Okay. However, so there are those who have blood type O who actually need meat products. 
I, I, I think all the blood type O people <laughs> are staring right now. <laughs> love their, love their bar boy. I love their bar boy. Yeah. Yeah, chicken. Yeah, but if you do have meat, make sure it's uh, organic or free range. Okay. You cannot eat commercial meat products because a lot of them have antibiotics as well as some are injected with hormones. So those end up in our bodies too. So it's best to get the organic free range meat if you're going to have uh, any type of meat products. But uh, again, that's hardly possible nowadays. Yeah. So the, the best you thing to do is the organic is organic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a part of lifestyle that we should also do on a regular basis is to do regular detoxification. Okay. So detox should be um, part of our wellness program. In your conversation with me, you mm -hmm. mentioned that detox or your gut is actually part of our immune system. Yeah, yeah. How 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 is that part of our immune system? Yeah, because uh, again, our immune system has to deal with toxicity, whether it comes from the environment or produced internally from metabolism. So oh, wow. if this toxic byproducts accumulate in the body, sometimes it could lead to autoimmune diseases. So the first step yeah. is detox. So make sure you poo-poo. <laughs> yeah, make sure you that, that, you're, uh, that you have regular bowel movements that you urinate properly, and that you mm. breathe properly. Um, wow, even breathing? Uh, even breathing, yeah, because a lot of people hold their breaths, so it's leading to carbon dioxide toxicity, and that could lead to sleepiness, sometimes headaches, if you have carbon dioxide retention. Oh, okay, I, I mean, I've been feeling sleepy. Uh... But during this lockdown, I, I, I thought that was boredom. Maybe I'm not breathing deeply enough, right? And uh, yeah, so our windows closed. Uh, so, so that might be, uh, yeah. Oh, that, that's, I, I'm going to try the deep breathing exercises. All right. That, that's yeah. very good. Right. Um, when it comes to maintaining our uh, nu nutritional needs for the immune mm -hmm. system, what are like the most common deficiencies people have? Is it like zinc, iron, or... What are, the, what are the important minerals for the immune system? And uh, are we generally deficient? So it, it, let's say if we just pick any of our webinar listeners right now, if you were to guess even before they, you do any tests on them, what do you think they will be deficient in which affects their immune system? Yeah, majority of people are deficient in vitamins B, C, B. as well as D. Okay. Uh, it's actually the vitamin C and D that we actually really need. We're one of the few mammals that doesn't produce vitamin C, so we need to get it from external sources. Wow, that's interesting. I, I, I realize that my dog produces his own vitamin C, but uh, yeah, yes, but yes, we you don't. Said <laughs> we produce our own vitamin C. All right. Yeah, uh, and among mammals, uh, goats supposedly produce a lot of vitamin C. Oh wow! Okay, Mostly. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> vitamin D. Vitamin D is one supplement that people generally don't take as much as vitamin C, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we need to boost yeah. on that. Yeah, and it's actually a very common deficiency. Before, when I was based in the states, I thought that um, you won't find vitamin C D deficiency here in the tropics. But when I moved here, like in 2013, I found out that majority of Filipinos are also vitamin D deficient and this is because we spend up a lot of time indoors so we're not how, getting enough sun exposure how important is vitamin D for the immune system so if you're deficient in vitamin D uh, what how how does it affect you I mean is your immune system compromised by 10 percent 20 percent I mean can, can we actually yeah. can you number to that for us to understand yeah, vitamin D actually helps in the production of CAMPs or catalysidin antimicrobial peptides. Mm. This is a um, substance that actually has um, antimicrobial properties. It actually helps kill off bacteria and viruses. So if you're not getting enough vitamin D, you don't produce enough CAMPs 
which make you more prone to infections such as the ones from bacteria or viruses. Wow, so this, this is really a frontline defense. It's not, it's not the immune system, uh, it's not like you get infected and your immune system fighting back. Uh, this, this is actually, vitamin D is important for the first invasion before the infection even sets in. Yeah, and that's why there's a lot of like viral syndromes such as the flu during the winter months. Um, in the tropics, you get more. Yeah, in the tropics, you get more of these viral infections during the rainy months, and that's because we don't get enough sun during the rainy months. How many minutes of of being in the sun do we need to be to get sufficient vitamin D? In in for those of us who want to save money and not buy <laughs> vitamin D. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, between 15 to 30 minutes a day. Okay, in direct yeah. sunlight. Yeah. All right, 15 to 20, 30 minutes a day. Uh, I, I don't think we, we, we get that now every day. Truly, truly, I don't no. think we do. <laughs> yeah, because we're always in the shade. We're always in the yeah. shade uh, somewhere. All right, okay. Yeah, wow, that's, that's possibly why you hear about this second way. Mm. Yeah. Because everything's locked down. Yeah, everybody's locked down, everybody's immune system is shut. So by the time we're released back into the society, a lot of us would be immunocompromised. And that could be, that could how you, that's how you could explain the possible second wave. Wow, that's, that's very good insight. Uh, wonderful, Dr. Joel. Thank you. Uh, get your vitamin D. MC. Uh, doc, any other minerals? You, you mentioned minerals. What are the common minerals that we are actually deficient in that affects our immune system? Yeah, one of the more common mineral deficiencies is zinc deficiency. Zinc? Wow. Yeah. We, we really definitely seldom take any zinc supplements at all. Uh, no, so not at all. And it's a very common micronutrient deficiency. How important is zinc for our immune system? Yeah, it's involved in like 300 metabolic processes in the body. Wow. That much. Yeah, it's important for sh blood sugar regulation. It's important for our hormones. It's important for our connective tissues. So just so many um, benefits from the use of the mineral zinc. But we, we're ending up with a lot of zinc deficiency because we're not getting enough nutrients. Not enough of these anymore from our diet. Wow, Doc, you, when you mentioned the, the things for zinc, you talk about blood sugar, you talk about connective tissue, you talk about... Uh, it, and these are the biggest problems in Philippines. You, it's mm -hmm. diabetes. Everybody's diabetic. So this would be from a zinc deficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, Filipinos who work in the city are looking older. <laughs> connective <laughs> tissue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wow, so so looking younger and having firm 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 skin and flesh, zinc is actually a important mineral. Yeah, zinc. Uh, of course, vitamin C, which also is a precursor to your collagen. So they work together. Okay, wow, yeah. wonderful. wonderful. So we have uh, wonderful tips. Uh, one one last thing to to ask, Doc. Is it totally necessary? Is it necessary to take supplements? Can we get enough nutrients from our daily food? Is, is that possible? Because I know there's such a push for like, for example, veganism. Uh, not, not any religious uh, aspect, but really there's this real push for whole foods, plant-based whole foods. And I, I believe in that, but I also wonder, uh, number one, it's very difficult to be totally vegan in the middle of mm -hmm. us and in the country of everything bang in a sow, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. is, is it possible actually to meet our nutritional requirements, especially for a pandemic, just through our foods alone? I mean, and, and I'm not talking for the rich or people who are living on farms. I'm, I'm talking about normal people, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for those of us who live in the city, it's probably essential for us to take supplements because we're not getting enough uh, nutrients from our food. So it's not possible if you order take out, if you go to Family Mart uh, to, to, to take the, the meal from Family Mart. Uh, so it's, it's really not possible to 
to get all the vitamin C, the D, the zinc, and, and, and other nutrients that you need without supplementation? Not really. And even if you ate 100% organic, you won't be able to access all the nutrients that you need unless the food is grown in a biodynamic way. That means oh, you rotate the crops. What, what's a biodynamic way? Yeah, it's a different type of agriculture. So basically you plant different crops on the soil on a yearly basis. Ah. So it's, you know, it's like, like what we call root, um, rotation. Yeah, yeah rather than planting the same food crops yearly because it actually would deplete the soil of certain minerals. Like if ah. you keep on planting rice, it'll deplete the soil of certain nutrients. So this is what the biodynamic farming is. So you actually rotate the crops that you plant on a yearly basis. I think that's a very interesting point that you brought up because, you know, for example, if we say that uh, papaya, papaya eats spinach, right? Because it's supposed to be rich in iron. But uh, the plants don't make iron. The iron comes from the soil. Yeah. So if the oil that the iron, uh, that the, the spinach is grown in has no more iron, even the spinach will be low in iron when it's supposed to be yeah. high in iron. That's right. right. So, wow, this is, uh, so, wow, it's a lot to consider. Uh, so it's really difficult. So we really need to supplement. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Doc, I mean, this is a more, more practical, uh, practical question for the everyday salary person, right? Worker. Mm -hmm. How much do we need to budget a month for supplementation? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, if, yeah, if, if I, on a, I only had like, if I don't have much, right? Let's say uh, I make 15,000 pesos. Uh, let's say I can squeeze 1,500 pesos. Um, what, what, what nutrients do I really need to make sure I get? Yeah, at least you should get a good basic multivitamin, omega-3 okay. fatty acids and probiotics. I mean, those would be the top three supplements that I would recommend for people on, on a limited budget. Oh, wow, I'm surprised. It's not, uh, 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 you, you actually added uh, omega-3 fatty acids into your, 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 your priority list. Okay, mm, so at it's, least not those three. it's not just yeah. vitamin D and vitamin D. Okay. So the, the omega-3, the oils are important. Okay, and the probiotics. If, if budget is not an issue, <laughs> if, if budget is not an issue, let's say I'm a bank manager and I make like 70 over 1,000 pesos a month. Um, how much, how much uh, would you say that I should be prepared, I should have the right frame of mind to invest in my own health? Uh, what do you think is a minimum I can't tell you that either. <laughs> but there are a lot of like uh, like uh, super dense uh, plants or um, food substances like, such as the microalgae. Mm. So these are nutrient dense. So oh, wow. at least you could uh, hey, actually... Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so you could actually invest in those products. You know, I I, I ask this question because it's, I, I think the pandemic uh, highlights uh, a, a mindset that we need to have. <clears throat> you know, when I was younger, uh, when I was really young, um, when we were both really young, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I didn't, we didn't want to spend money on insurance, you know, because it's like, I, I'd rather have the money in my hand. Why, why should I buy insurance, right? Mm -hmm. But as as I graduated from college, uh, when I when I started working, I, I began to understand that insurance was so important that I called up my insurance agent. It was not my insurance agent hounding me. I actually called up my insurance agent telling them I, I need to look at insurance coverage. So there was a, a change in my understanding and, and because of that, a change in my priority of where I spend money that comes in every month. So right now, I, I think that it's a growing awareness that suddenly um, we have to actually budget a certain amount of our, our uh, income to keep mm -hmm. ourselves healthy, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm speaking now for all those who are in my age group. 
<laughs> and Dr. Wells age group. All right. Uh, I, I'm 46 years old this year. So all, all of you out there who are in your 40s, I want to give you a very scary uh, wake up call. We will likely live to 90. <laughs> we will likely live 90 years old because uh, even if we get sick, uh, medical science will keep us alive. Uh, it may not keep us healthy, but it will keep us alive. So I, I feel like, <laughs> and that's why you need to go to Dr. Joel's clinic because that's where you get healthy. All right. So I, I realized that I'm 46 years old. I have, I, I very likely have another 45 years. And I began to ask myself, um, how do I want to be when I'm, when I'm 80 years old? I just saw a video, Doc. It's viral now, a few million people. Mm. This couple who are in their 90s dancing, like extreme ballroom dancing. I don't know whether you saw that video. There's two couples, they are 90 years old, but they are like doing spinning. And my goodness, he actually swung his wife in between his legs. I was like, <laughs> he was going to throw his back or something, you know? But uh, he, he did that with his wife in, in their 90s. And I, I realized uh, in order to do that, uh, I can't wait till I'm 80 because my, my, my Ninong and my mentor actually told me, uh, my health in 20 years is determined today. Mm -hmm. So what I eat today at age 46 will determine what I will be like when I'm 66 years old. So because of that, I actually started to budget a lot of my budget now is uh, into into supplement. So there we have it. We have today. Well, let's let's thank Doc Joel. You know, uh, he has number one, gave us a great uh, understanding of the immune system, and uh, where we were able to understand some very technical terms like T cells, NK cells, macrophage, and tritic cells uh, through the wonderful video, educational video he shared with us, um, Doc Joel helped us understand the difference between the innate and adaptive uh, uh, immune system and we have both parts um, and that adaptive is what the vaccines are trying to stimulate. Um, Dr. Joel also explained to us that the immune system is powerful but it only works if you have the right fuel. So you, we, to have a strong immune system, Dr. Joel gave us some really clear directions. Uh, number one was uh, make sure you detox. So if you're not poo-pooing, you're building up toxicity that will compromise your immune system. Uh, vitamin C, we all know. Uh, vitamin D, um, we are not taking enough of that. And without vitamin D, your body actually doesn't produce the enzymes that actually kill. Uh, was it enzymes, Doc? Uh, this uh, CAMPs. There C are peptides. 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 peptides that actually kills these viruses and bacteria that come in. So a uh, big tip to everybody, go, go when you next go to look at your supplementation, take a look at vitamin D and zinc. We are Dr. Joel's experience, and uh, which is also validated with so much research, is that most people are zinc deficient. So again, if you don't have zinc, uh, your blood sugar gets affected, your connective tissue, which means the strength of your tissues, all right? everything gets affected, your immune system gets compromised. So the next time you go to a uh, store to look for supplements, look again at zinc. And I, I'm very thankful Dr. Joel uh, also highlighted something that I, I personally uh, am aware as well. I also believe in natural foods, whole natural foods, but I also realize that it is so difficult in, when you live in a city uh, and when, you know, it's KFC, uh, Popeyes, <laughs> uh, when all my staff, my staff, they're always eating at Family Mart, you know, it's 99 pesos, 120 pesos, and they're eating at Family Mart, and I see them eating the same thing every day. The whole, the vegetable that they eat is rice, <laughs> and the other thing that they eat is fried chicken. So uh, really, if, if that's our lifestyle and that's the food that we eat, we cannot, we cannot make it without supplementation. And thank you, Dr. Well, for confirming that and also directing us to, to, for supplementation. For supplementation, Dr. Well's recommendation was, you know, 
your, your standard, you know, your multivites, so vitamin C, vitamin D. Uh, and he put another important category, which is your omega-3s, uh, your fatty acids. So you've got to also look into that. Usually multivitamins don't contain omega-3s. That's a sub separate supplement. So take a look at that. And the last thing Dr. Uh, Joel recommended, if you are on a tight budget, is probiotics. Yeah, so if you're not able to get probiotics, you could try fermented food, such as kimchi. Not beer, huh? Uh, <laughs> in, in the Philippines, we have something called achara, achara. which is fermented, fermented papaya. Okay. So it's a good source of probiotics. Then, of course, you have kefir. Okay. Kefir. Kefir, uh, achara. Achara is something that you can purposely pick uh, when you next go to the cafeteria, make sure you eat more of that. So there we have it. Uh, that's, thank you, Doc. That was a wonderful conversation. We talked about so many thank things, you. so many interesting things. And uh, it was a good overview, you know, how the different vitamins and minerals work on a different session so that you can go out and shop and, and look for the one that, that will work for you. All right. So thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Doc. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we look forward to having you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you everyone for joining us on this episode of Simply Healed with Dr. Joel. I hope that like me, you've learned a lot about your immune system, about your adaptive, about your innate immune system. I certainly enjoyed that candid conversation with Dr. Joel and there were so many tidbits and insights like his personal views, uh, professional views on the virus itself and the chances of a, of a successful vaccine coming up. But I think the real take home from the webinar we had today was the, the solid tips that Doc gave, Dr. Joel gave us for the selection of supplements to maintain and boost your immune system as you get ready to get out of the lockdown and back into the working world where you will again be exposed to many, many people and interactions. So Dr. Joel mentioned that, you know, vitamin C is important, vitamin D, which we are all likely deficient because we've been staying at home for two months. And also the omega-3 fatty acids and zinc, which works together with vitamin Z, C to, to build your immune system. Well, if you're looking for all these things, let me give, let me take the opportunity now to share with you that Simply Nature Pipa Tablets naturally contains natural vitamin C, the B group, the omega-3 fatty acids, uh, natural minerals like zinc, all right? Um, and more importantly, we contain Pipa agonist, which actually activates the dendritic cell activity, the macrophage cell, the T cells, all the immune system functions you saw in that video that Dr. Joel shared with us. So if you want to find out more, just give us, drop us a note on our Simply Nature Facebook Messenger, all right, and we will get back to you. Alternatively, you can go directly to Dr. Joel at J, J. Lopez Medical Group. It's his clinic is actually it's a beautiful large clinic. It's actually located in Centuria in Medical City, Makati. All right. Now, before I go, I want to tell you good news. Next week, we're going to have one last webinar before the lift of the lockdown. We're going to have a very candid and special interview with Doc Maddie, and the topic is really exciting. It's a very personal topic as well. It's, the topic is about what, what, what to do next if you've tried all the medical uh, options already. If you tried drugs, surgery, therapy, and yet you're not getting the healing that you want. Where do you go to next? So Doc Maddie and I will be having, I'll be interviewing Doc Maddie on her journey as a ER doctor. She started as an emergency room doctor and how she moved to practice integrative medicine today. And she's one of the foremost practitioners having spent so much time and effort over the years going overseas for training. So she'll share with you an uh, insight on what integrative medicine is, you know, and how it works with your normal medical protocols. She is still an MD, and so it's a very interesting journey as we follow her journey from an ER doctor to an integrative doctor. And I believe that will give you the insight, comfort, and confidence as you explore more options to get the healing that you want. So don't forget, just before the lockdown lifts, join us and I'll see you next week with Doc Maddie.